Go ahead. Our mission, Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents. Through support and resources offered, we aspire to help individuals become shining light parents, meaning a shift from a state of emotional heaviness to one of hopefulness and greater peace of mind. Helping Parents Heal goes a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and afterlife evidence in a non-dogmatic way. Helping Parents Heal affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious background, and encourage open dialogue. Attendance at all Helping Parents Heal meetings is voluntary. All discussions that take place at affiliate-led meetings are confidential. We hope that participants will learn from and share with each other. Zoom meetings run by leadership are not confidential. These meetings typically feature guest presenters and are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members worldwide can watch and benefit. Neither type of Helping Parents Heal meeting is designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers, allowing parents to learn about many possible ways to heal. This includes presenters covering progressive topics, such as afterlife evidence and connecting with our children who have passed. The views expressed by our guest speakers may or, may or may not reflect the opinions of Helping Parents Heal leaders and members, so we ask that you take from their presentations, whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome everyone. We're so glad you could join us this evening. You're in for a real treat. We just love Mark Anthony. We do. And I have a short bio for him and I want to tell you just a little bit about him. And we were just so grateful to have him again at the conference last time. And they'll be at the conference again this time. Uh, Mark Anthony, JD, Psychic Explorer, AKA Psychic Lawyer, is a fourth generation psychic medium who communicates with spirits. He is an Oxford educated attorney who has tried over a hundred jury trials and is licensed to practice law in Florida. Oh, excuse me, Florida, Washington, DC, and before the United States Supreme Court. Mark Anthony is known as the Psychic Explorer due to his extensive background in science, quantum physics, survival of consciousness, near-death experiences, history, archaeology, philosophy, and theology. He examines mystical locations in the United States and remote corners of the world to explore ancient ruins, mysteries, and supernatural phenomena. Mark appears nationwide on TV and radio on many different uh, shows. He is the co-host of The Psychic in the Doc on Transformation Talk Radio. He is a columnist for the Best Holistic Life magazine. His latest book um, is The Afterlife Frequency, and I know that everyone here knows all about that incredible book. His other best-selling books are Never Letting Go and Evidence of Eternity, both equally uh, wonderful books. Mark Anthony is a featured speaker at afterlife and paranormal uh, conferences and universities, including Brown, Columbia, Harvard, and Yale, as well as Helping Parents Heal, where he and his manager, Rocky, are uh, well-loved by parents and families. Um, you can learn more about him by clicking the link that I'm going to put in the chat box. And without further ado, please join me and Irene in welcoming Mark Anthony, psychic lawyer. Welcome, Mark. Uh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you having me here. Um, welcome, everybody. I want to start with a uh, brief orientation, take a few minutes, uh, because if I launch into spirit communication without you understanding how they work with me and I work with them, it can be kind of like, huh? So we want to get past that and so that you guys get the maximum benefit out of this. Think of your soul as like a drop of water. And so that when we we physically um, die, our, our, our soul, like that drop of water, it's not been created by the brain. It's merely hosted by the brain. And that drop of water leaves and plunges into the eternal sea of consciousness, which I call the collective consciousness. 
And then your soul uh, is interconnected with an infinite array of other souls, other spirits. So that's why when spirits come through, sometimes they will bring up information that far exceeded the scope of anything they knew in this life. Because a lot of times people are like, well, he didn't know that. He didn't know her. Guess what? They know it now. And one of the facets of, of my books is the concept of collective consciousness communication. So when I open up my brain to higher frequencies and spirits come forward, I'll, I'll get a spirit connect with me and I'll start describing him or her. Now, this is very important. If that spirit makes sense with you or with more than one of you, please raise your hand. Because what will happen is that spirits with a commonality will come through together. And this can also include a commonality among the recipients. One of my favorite examples of this, I was doing a session, a uh, public event in Florida, and I got the, the word Paisley, Paisley. And I said, does Paisley make sense to anyone? Three people raised their hands. The first lady said, this is weird, but I was at... Um, the mall today. And when I was walking by Macy's, I decided I needed to buy a Paisley skirt. And then a gentleman stood up and said, well, my father passed recently and I was going through his things yesterday and I wanted his Paisley tie. And the third person, she stood up and said, well, my grandmother's name was Paisley and we were very close. And then all the spirits connected to the Paisleys came forward. Now, here's what's interesting. The commonality between the spirits was the word of the name Paisley. But when the spirits came through, they started talking about thyroid and pancreatic issues. Guess what? Each of the three people either had a, a pancreatic issue, one had a thyroid issue, and one had both. It gets even better because that happened a couple years ago. And then on my live stream show... Um, about a month ago, we had a caller um, who called in and said, remember that example you gave about Paisley? She said, well, I was in the audience in Florida that night and I didn't say anything. I don't know why I didn't raise my hand, but my son died in Paisley, Florida. So she missed out on a connection with her son. And that's why I always tell people, raise your hand, okay, if it makes sense to you. So when a spirit, when I when I lock on to you and I and we bring you up, um, and the spirit starts transmitting information to me, I'm going to see things, hear things, feel things, and know things, and I'll be describing it to you. The questions I'll be asking you a lot will be: Do you recognize this, or does that make sense? Please avoid the dreaded no, no, no syndrome. A lot of people fall into, no, 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 no. And when you do that energetically, it's like you're slamming the door in the spirit's face. He or she will back off. It's better to say, I'm not sure. Let me think about it. I don't know just yet because it's after the reading. Think the reading like a flower, blooms, blossoms, unfolds. It can take hours, days, weeks, or longer for the full impact of a reading to make sense. Quick example, I was doing a session for two sisters. Their mother had passed. She comes through. She starts to talk to me about their other sister. Other sister's alive and well, but she wasn't present during the reading. And the mother kept giving me the name Michael. Michael, 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 and 1011, October 11. Now, of course, how many of you have met somebody named Michael in your life? <laughs> okay, a lot of Michaels. We all know lots of Michaels, but they couldn't think of anyone significant by the name of Michael. And um, they also couldn't think of anything in October. So 10, 11, October 11 didn't ring a bell. If that happens, don't worry about it. Just jot it down. If in other words, if you don't get it, don't sweat it. Well, six weeks later, they contacted me and they said, Mark, we figured it out. 10 days after the reading with you, it was October 11th, 10, 11, and that's the day that Hurricane Michael hit our sister's hometown in Florida. She went into labor three weeks early and had her baby girl during Hurricane Michael on 10, 11. 
Well, now it's making sense. You see, spirits can bring up future events. I'm actually writing an article about this, uh, which will be out in the March edition of Best Holistic Life magazine, like how can spirits see or future events? Also, when it comes to the information, don't overthink it or hyperanalyze it. Okay, a lot of people are like, um, overthink, overthink, overthink. Don't do that. Go with what hits you first. Ladies, this is your chance to use women's intuition. Guys, trust your instinct. Go with what hits you first. If you overanalyze something initially, you can bog it down with the no, no, no syndrome. Also, your interpretation is more important than mine. I was doing a session uh, about a month ago for this woman, and her husband's spirit comes through and says to me, Igloo. And I'm like, Igloo? I live in Florida. Igloos are not a thing here. I mean, it's literally 100 degrees outside here. I go, I got nothing. She goes, oh, my God. She goes, my daughter's in Alaska right now, and she called me on the phone yesterday because she's getting married there, and she told me that her wedding planner used to live in an igloo. I think that's it. And I go, I'm pretty sure that's it. Here's what was going on there. That was how her husband was saying, I'm around you, and I'm around our daughter, and to prove it, I'm going to bring up igloo, some weird thing about her wedding planner. So when a piece of information comes in, it may not be about the spirit. You see, in that example, Igloo had nothing to do with her husband. It had everything to do with their daughter. So a lot of times people will say, no, 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 that doesn't apply to the spirit. You have to think globally. How does that piece of information make sense to you? Could it be applying to you? Could it be applying to somebody in this world? Or could it be applying to another spirit? Another aspect of collective consciousness communication, we're going to arc from one person to the next. I can guarantee you that's going to happen tonight. With names, I may get something close to the name. Um, everybody laughs at this, but when you're on the spot, Mitchell could be Michael, Wendy could be Penny, Cindy could be Sandy, Danny could be Donnie. I was doing a session for somebody recently, and I kept getting the name Marty. No, 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 his name was Monty. Cut me some slack. If I hear Marty and the name is Monty, close enough. If I hear McGillicuddy, but his name is Hammersmith, well, then that's not it. I, I will pick up on how people passed. I know this can be extremely upsetting, but this is one of the first things they give me. I'm going to feel it. Different causes of death may have a similar physical sensation to me. So if I say I'm getting an impact to my head, that can indicate head trauma, stroke, aneurysm, or a quick passing, because I get a jolt. Burning sensations tends to be cancer, although they may have been burned in some way, or it could be neurological burning nerve pain. That one's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Last example, numbers. Numbers are always challenging. They can be at age, date, time frame, address, or grouping. Like the sisters with 1011. Of course, they didn't know the baby was going to be born on 10-11 until she was. So if you don't get it right away, don't sweat it. Um, also, if I ask you a question, please just answer my question. Do not give me the New Testament length answer. Um, I was doing a, a reading for this really sweet lady. It was a phone reading. I could tell she was in her 80s. She was the grandmother everybody wants. You know what I mean? I can almost smell the, the brownies baking in the background when I was doing the reading for her. Just sweet lady. And she had this male relative come through, and I get pilot, pilot. And she goes, oh, gracious me, he was a pilot. You know, his name was David. He lived in Michigan. He had cancer. He had this weird thing with his finger, and he was the personal pilot for President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Whoa. All I needed was a, yes, he was a pilot. So if you inadvertently start going on about something and I say Dwight D. Eisenhower, that means let's rein it in. Okay, is everybody good Good with that? <clears throat> yes. All right. Mark, can I ask a question? Is it okay if we have them just put the answers in the chat box because when they raise their hands, everybody bounces around and it's kind of hard to find people. Is that okay with you? Am I gonna have to read the chat box to get their no, feedback in? We're going to be doing it. <laughs> okay. Look, I all I want to do is do what I do. However it works best for you, do okay. that. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, it's it's really a trip. What COVID has done for us, it started things like this. 
because, you know, I've been doing phone readings and Skype and Zoom readings for years, but then there's things like this where everybody's the size of a postage stamp. And I remember the first time I did a Zoom uh, conference like this, I'm like, please, God, make this work. And it does. And the reason for that is because spirits, I, I refer to spirits as the electromagnetic soul. Uh, that's a concept I developed for my book, The Afterlife Frequency. And spirit communication, like a telephone call, moves at the speed of light. And that's how we're able to do this on Zoom. Um, Elizabeth or Irene, do you have any other preliminary questions? Um, no, no. the good. only thing is that if someone gets a reading, please turn your screen on in case it's not on right now. So be ready to do that. And I think that that's, and turn off all background noise as well. And I believe that's all. Yeah, and if I'm doing a reading for you, please don't be walking around and, and all that. Um, I need you to be stable when I'm, I mean, you know, because people say, well, if I'm walking around, it's like, well, look, if I was a surgeon and I needed to take out your appendix, would you want to walk around <laughs> while I was doing it? I don't think so. Okay. So <clears throat> let me start with the prayer to raise frequency and then we begin. Oh God, make us an instrument of your peace where there is hatred. Let us sow love where there's injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O divine God, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving the we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Um, I'm getting a lot of spirits, but a, a female, a young, a little girl, little girl, um, gosh, she could have been probably not quite five. And I feel like, um, I feel my, my windpipe is, is obstructed. Like I'm choking and I'm feeling a choking, choking. Now this doesn't feel like she was strangled. This was something causing some type of swelling and obstruction in her throat, I'm also feeling her lungs um, are inflamed, and I feel very, very nauseated. And uh, the nauseated, um, um, oh, is that making, oh, okay. Um, the the nausea is indicating to me that um, she was, was very ill <clears throat> prior to passing. Normally, nausea, it could be a cancer indicator. It could also be an indication that she was... Um, having difficulty eating and or holding down food prior to passing. But I keep getting this choking sensation. I'm also getting a massive pain in, in my head. This little girl was very, very sick, and she was going into some type of respiratory failure. Does this make sense with anybody? Yes, we have. Ish yes, it does. Taking it. And I've asked her to unmute. Hi, Ish, can you please unmute? So we could spotlight you. Can you speak, please? Hello. Yeah, this is Ish. Oh, um, and I think my wife is also here, Sabina. Okay. Sabina, okay. Let me. Okay, yeah, she's, are, she, she, she's there with you. Okay, yeah, go ahead and put her on, on screen with you if you could. I've uh, asked her Sabina to unmute. Is, uh, okay. Sabina, yeah. It's another screen. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Um, all right. So, Ish. Um, uh, just based on what I'm telling you, th this makes sense. A younger girl, not right around five, um, the obstruction feels like uh, lungs, uh, nauseated sensation. That makes sense to you? Yes. Uh, okay. All of them. All of that. Okay. Is it, I take it this is your daughter? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't mean to, to smile, but she's making me smile. Okay, because there's nothing funny about losing a child, but she doesn't want to be all depressed. Yeah. She's smiling. And I know little girls like soft, fuzzy, furry animals, but I feel like she's holding, it almost feels like a little lamb, like Mary had a little lamb, um, but it dog. could be a poodle because like, you know, a little lamb and a, a poodle. Does that make any sense? Did she have, yes. uh, okay, in, in, in what yes. way, Sabina? How does that make sense? Um, she had a little dog that's her and the dog transition on her transition anniversary exactly to the date oh the, my the goodness month. yeah because yes. i can feel the warmth of the dog up to her so she and this beautiful little dog your beautiful little girl and her beautiful little dog 
have come through in tandem. Um, uh -huh. And she said that, um, mom, mom, she's talking about your teeth. Okay. Are you having any issues with dental issues or swelling or some issues? It could be either one of you, but I'm feeling issues with my teeth and I'm also feeling issues um, with my gums. Is either one of you having any, because a lot of times spirits will come through and they're going to talk about themselves, but they're also going to talk about you and they can bring up medical, personal, financial, yeah. all sorts of things. Um, anything with teeth or mouth going on with either one of you? Yeah. Yes, I go, but I am getting treatment for it. Yeah, periodontics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, so she's around. She said, it's basically, she said, "Good, good move, mom. Good move, mom. It's like you're doing the right thing." And um, interesting. I'm tasting antibiotics. Are you going through a regimen of antibiotics first to get the swelling down before they proceed any further? Um, not right now. No, not right. Okay. But I did in the past. Mm. Oh, you did in the past. Okay. So she's yeah. showing me that. Okay. Now, um, she said, Dad, she's focusing on your index finger. Is there some problem? Did you have some issue or problem with your finger, index finger? It's with your right hand. And I feel like a swelling in my finger and in my knuckles and co connective tissues of my hand. Let me think about it. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a, it's the middle finger. Okay, Sorry. but she's being diplomatic. She's using the this finger, not you know that finger. Okay, uh -huh. so <laughs> she's very nice. Okay, uh -huh. um, hold on, and I'm smelling. I it could be lavender or lilac, lavender or lilac, which are both um beautiful light purple colors. Does a light purple make sense to either of yes. you? I know. Purple is a very spiritual color, but yeah. I'm, I'm yes, just... that's her, her whole room. room is purple. I found the purple heart as a sign, even like a plastic. Yes, that's her color. Uh, that's it's, everything. It's it's her favorite color. Perfect. The light okay. color, light shade. Yeah, light shade. Um, she knows that. Uh, I mean, this goes probably not probably. I know this goes for every parent here, and it's. When I was talking about collective consciousness communication, um, even though we're talking to your little girl, she is now the spokesperson for this vast choir of children who are coming through. And she said to me that we know, all these children know that you think of us every day. And now she's making a individualized message to, to you, Ish, and to Sabina, um, she's talking about some type of it's either a drawing, uh, a picture, a drawing, a painting. Oh, is there? Yeah, is there something that that either you're working on or doing oh. that she's acknowledging? Go ahead, Sabina. Yes, we paid an artist in Europe to do a, a portrait of her, and the painting is we don't have it yet. It's, the artist say it's drawing. It's going to be mailed from Europe. She is so happy you're doing that. And she said yeah. that it's, it's not so much for her, it's for you. And she said, yeah. this is very, very, she is so happy that the two of you, you've been very proactive. You have not surrendered to your grief. She said, you've been very proactive. You've been doing things. She said, you are really working to to get through all of this. And she's explaining to me that your deep faith has carried you, she said, across the bridge of darkness, across the bridge of darkness. So essentially, whatever you're doing, keep doing. Um, and she also said that you're rearranging the stones. What? Rearranging the stones. Are you doing something with a pathway? or a path, like rearranging stones. I, I'm seeing like a bunch of stones on the ground. Now this, we may be arcing over to another spirit. So is that making okay. sense to either one of you? Not right uh, now. All right, I'm going to yeah. leave you with the message that okay, whatever she said, basically what you're doing, keep doing. All right, um, I'm getting, this is another girl. She seems a little bit older and her parent or parents 
is doing something with concrete or a walkway or pavers. She said somebody is rearranging like stepping stones. Um, and does that make sense with anyone? I'm seeing a house that is it's white or a light color. It looks like it got has green trim. Does this make sense? Okay, somebody said I've been redoing her stepping stones. All right, then th that's who I want to talk to. Okay. 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 Let me find Stephanie. <clears throat> um, hi, Stephanie. Can you unmute, please? Yes. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Okay. See if I can find you. Um, can you say hi one more time, Stephanie? Hi. I got you. There okay. she is. We don't have green trim, though. So. Yeah, hold on, you're doing the no, no, no thing. Knock it off, okay? <laughs> it's but like, I do, I do here's, have this. here's the spirit ship. Let's <laughs> torpedo it, okay? Let's okay. not do that. Because here's the, here's the thing. I've seen um, texts from messages from other people and somebody I think does have green trim. So what's going on here, Stephanie? We're starting with you, then we're gonna arc over to their kids, okay? So, and be careful about showing me the rhinoceros because that may have come up in the reading, okay? So so that was your Dwight D. Eisenhower moment. Okay, <laughs> it's a good example. Okay, um, hold on. This is so funny. Your daughter is giving you a corkscrew and a bottle of red wine, dry red wine. Does that make sense to you? Yes. <laughs> okay. She said, Mom, you need a drink. And she's not being facetious. She said, Mom, you need a drink. And this is really nice because she's indicating to me you don't have a drinking problem. It's just yeah. that she said that you really know um, you're a very intense person, a very loving person, a very spiritual person. <laughs> And but you also know how to, and when to relax. So she's really paying you a beautiful compliment. And she showed me two fish in conjunction. Let me explain what I mean by that. The two fish in conjunction is generally an indicator of the Pisces time frame. Yep. And Pisces can run. Okay, Pisces is making sense in what way? Toby's a Pisces and my daddy was a Pisces. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you say your daughter was a Pisces? Yes. Okay, perfect. And your dad was a Pisces and he's yes. in spirit? Okay. Yes. All right. So your dad is there with her and yeah. your dad's rubbing his, his cheek. Did your dad have a heavy beard or did he no. have some issue? Would you wait with the no, no, no stuff? Back in the class. Okay. Um, what it is, he's he's rubbing, like I, um, I'm feeling a five o'clock shadow. Now that could either indicate... Shaved a lot. He had an issue with his skin or a beard, um, but he is making me feel something about shaving. Or, or let's broaden the parameters. Think globally. Does shaving make sense to you in any other way, Stephanie? No. <laughs> I mean, See your no, no, knowing again. How about not at this time? Not at this time. Because not it at this will. Time. Okay. Now, when if I say your dad and shaving, what what make what what do you immediately think of? He would shave every day. Okay, there's one. <laughs> All right, hold on. And um, your daughter just presented to me a. It could be a sunflower because I'm seeing it. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. All right, yes. in what way? <laughs> it's all right. Take a moment. I know this is intense. And she said. I want you to feel happy when you see a sunflower. I know you think of me. And uh -huh. and um, is there, I know your name is Stephanie, but is there somebody like a Sadie? Sadie, Sadie could be Katie. Um, yeah. Yes. Go, go, go ahead. All right. First explain the sunflower and then go to the Sadie or Katie. Kobe had a sun, fake sunflower in her bathroom in a vase. And I have it in my bathroom, but I now and her best and one of her good friends is a photographer and gave me a photograph of sunflowers and i have it on my wall perfect and perfect. my little my little neighbor is named sadie perfect okay when a spirit gives us a message of an explanatory advisory nature which was the sunflower and your dad shaving okay indicating that your dad who shaved every day is with her 
All right, and then she gave you the sunflower. But then when the spirit follows that up with an objectively verifiable fact, the name Sadie, which is a name you don't hear very much, yeah. um, the verifiable fact of Sadie is how the spirits are letting you and I know that we have properly received and interpreted the message before that. So for everybody, if I say during this session tonight, verifiable fact following a message, we know we got it. So um, <sighs> smell is very important to you. It's not smell, it's it's fragrance. Um, there's something she's talking about you and fragrance. And it smells very, very clean. Is there something like you, everything with you, it's like your house cannot have a, a funky smell. You've got, I mean, most people don't, but but she said that mom is like really into this fragrance. Ooh, it doesn't it doesn't make sense right now, but I did just clean. <laughs> okay. And would you say that your house smells clean right now? No. Yeah. Yes. And there, there's your fragrance. Yes. Okay. But I'm not getting overpowering bleach. It's some other type of clean. Do you use pine saw? I use vinegar and water. <laughs> oh, vinegar and water. All right. What is with pine or pine saw or pine scent? No, it's not resonating. Hold on. Hold on. I just came home from work and cleaned everything with pine there. saw. Okay. <laughs> Whoever that is, we're going to her. Okay. <laughs> Thank All you. right. Or him. Thank you, Stephanie. God Thank bless you. you. Very sorry for your loss. And say hi to Sadie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, let's get our pine saw person up here. Sure. Hi, iPhone 3. Can you please unmute and tell us your name? Hi there. Hi there. This is Rachel. Can you hear me hi. okay? Rachel. Cool. Can you hear me? Elizabeth, you have to unmute. Okay, we're looking for her. Okay. Uh, um iphone so it's it's iphone on the... iphone 3 it says iphone 3 i renamed her because there were so many oh, iPhones. I, I got it okay okay there we go hello hello iphone 3 are you actually rachel <laughs> yeah that's me can you hear hi me rachel okay? yes okay. yes can, can you hear me yep thanks okay all right pine saw um <laughs> Well, I mean, the smell of clean. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, I don't, I, I don't fling out random household cleaners hoping to get a hit. Okay, it's like <laughs> they give this to me. Um, is it your son who passed? My daughter. Your daughter, okay, because there is a male energy coming through. But I'm going to ask him to step aside. Let's get your daughter in here first. And what I'm getting with her is, and first off, for everybody, please accept my deepest sympathies and condolences. I also want to let everybody know that when I start giving evidence, when I really, um, when they really start hitting me fast, I can sound very clinical, particularly with how they passed. Like, uh, I'm feeling this, feeling this, and I don't mean it like that. I'm very sympathetic. It's just, it's coming in so fast, I want to give it to you um, the way I'm getting it. And the reason I'm saying that um, Rachel, is that with the female energy associated with you, I'm feeling like one day here, one day not, one day here, one day not. So it feels to me that this was an abrupt or quick passing. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, and the weird thing <clears throat> or, or the notable sensation is I'm feeling this strange thing with my circulation. Um, it's like all of a sudden... It's like my blood flow just stopped. It's like all of a sudden, it's not like her heart went ba bump ba bump ba bump. It's like all of a sudden it just stopped. Do you have any knowledge of that? Mm. Um, well, I mean, yeah, that makes that makes sense. I mean, clearly everybody's heart and lung stops when they pass. I get that, but this is like an abrupt stop. And she just handed you through me, and I'm smelling it, a pineapple. <laughs> we went from pine salt to pineapple. Let me explain mm -hmm. about pineapples. Uh, before we get into my interpretation, does a pineapple make sense to you in any way? It does. In what way? <laughs> um, well, it's, it's kind of like a long running inside joke for our family that uh, we're quirky, nerdy history buffs and our kids, um, when they were little, knew that uh, back in olden times for status, people would rent a pineapple to carry around town yeah and this was yeah. just a fun fact they latched on to early and we joked about it for years so whenever perfect. i bring one home from the store my kids would walk around with it and be funny well perfect <laughs> there we go now 
I don't mean to go through the produce department, but now she's handing me a big chunk of watermelon. And normally when I get watermelon, that's one of my indicators for the month of July because I associate watermelon with the 4th of July. It could mean you or she love or hate watermelon, but it also could be an issue that somebody may have, um, you or her or somebody else close to you, with potassium. Hmm. So it could be a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event. Birth, death, anniversary, or event connect you or her or someone close to you within the month of July. It could indicate something about watermelons, love them or hate them, or something about potassium. This is what I've termed a multiple meaning message. One symbol, one vision has more than one possible meaning. Go ahead. Well, I have a bunch of watermelon in my fridge and I've been chowing down on it all week. I'm the only person in the house who likes it anymore. She loved it. And I loved there you it, go. But, uh, <laughs> well, this, the, so, no, this is significant, Rachel, because this is her way. Remember the igloo example I gave? Yeah. This is your igloo. Yeah. She's letting you know that she is around you and aware mm -hmm. of what's happening in your life. She said, though, that you need to stop drifting into a daydream state when you're driving. You tend to be very thoughtful and you start kind of not paying attention because you have a very active and inquisitive mind. The issue, the problem there is sometimes when you're driving, you're not quite all there. Does that make any sense to you? I think brief brain is real and that's an astute comment. Yeah, absolutely. I can be more mindful than yeah, please do. Please do. Because the reason she's bringing this up, this is what I term spirit intervention. And this is where mm -hmm. spirits can see future events. And she is bringing this up so that you will avoid getting into a collision. Because she said that it's about a mile, mile and a half from where you live. There's this weird intersection where there's like two, two, um, roads heading from different direction i mean in the same direction converging on an intersection it's like a, a five-way intersection there's something there's some mm -hmm. weird complicated do you know which one i'm talking about yeah, yeah. and they're doing construction on it i drove through it today on yeah, the way to work. She, that's mm -hmm. that's and in, in in other words don't just pay attention there pay attention everywhere but she said that that intersection you have to watch out for Okay. Is that and, true? Is that true for me and my family or just me? Um, let's take it for the whole family. Okay? Might as well. Everybody well, watch yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, because here's the thing. When a spirit gives us a message like this, you've got to think globally. She's giving it mm -hmm. to you because you're the one in connection with me who's in connection with her. And this is a me see, mm -hmm. spirits like to bring messages of love, healing, resolution, and protection. And once mm -hmm. again, spirit intervention. Does she have a brother? Do you have a son, brother? Yes. Yes. Yeah. She has a brother. Okay. He really needs this message. Okay. Mm -hmm. He really needs yeah. this message. Okay. Yeah, he heads through that intersection on the way to school. Okay. Because she's taking a flare gun and shooting a flare up, which is okay. indicating it, it applies to all of you, but particularly him. Um. Now, we all know John or Johnny, but I'm hearing Johnny, 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 but Johnny could be Tommy. Sometimes it could be a female name like Jenny, but I'm hearing a Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Does that make sense to you in any shape, form, her, or fashion? Her grandpa here on Earth is named John. And he's here on Earth? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is he um, she, having some... Hold on. Is he having any issues with walking or um, stability on his feet? Um, he's having some problems with physical acuity, you know, losing some balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she's showing me. Is he using a cane yet? Because she depicts him with a cane. I went through this Not with yet. my dad and he fought us tooth and nail on the cane. So expect that battle, but mm -hmm. that's coming and he really needs to be using one now. That's mm -hmm. what she's okay. saying. Okay. Um, she wants to leave with an image of a seahorse. Oh, that's a cool image. <clears throat> Does that make sense to you? And I have uh, associations with that, but go ahead with yours first. Um, her middle name is Marin, which means of the sea. Ooh, so... let's go. Let's go with that one. Let's go with that one. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Rachel, thank, thank you, you so much. What oh. my heart is really warm. I really appreciate this. Oh, thank you. And, and I love th that I love that Pine Sol was the hook. <laughs> no, I mean, well, the one thing I've learned in the years of doing this, a spirit, they're going to get a message through to us one way or another. The question is, are we listening? And you were listening, so good. Well, so. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, yeah, thank you, Rachel. Thank you so th much. Thank you, Rachel. Um, okay. Um, Elizabeth or, or Irene, do you have somebody else on deck that a lot of those things were making sense to? Um, we have a lot of people who are connecting. Let's see. For the seahorse, um, gosh, we have people talking. Did, about I want to back up a bit. Um, um, uh, did somebody have a green and white house? Because uh, the stepping stones are back. And I keep getting like a white house with green trim, or it could be a green house with white trim, but it looks like yeah. a white house with green trim. Let me go back because I had written a little note about that. And there's so much in the chat now. Yes. Um, Birgit, I think, is the person that had the white house with the green trim. Oh, that's what you were saying, I believe. So yes. Okay, yeah. Let's bring up white house with green trim. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't see her. Do you see her, Elizabeth? I'm oh, and Jessalyn says, I have a white house and green trim. I just mopped with Lysol, which is not quite the same thing. But um, <laughs> yeah, um, so, Brigitte well, is not Somebody here. has a white house with green trim that mopped with Lysol. I'll take that. Okay. So that's Jessalyn. <laughs> is that okay? Jessalyn? Um, no, Jess. It's J-E-S-S. -S. Okay. 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 So, I've asked her to unmute. And then Phyllis too. Phyllis has a White House with green trim. We'll start with uh, is it Jess? Jesslyn? Jess That's first. Jesslyn, yes. Jesslyn. Hi. Okay. All right. Bring her up. Here we go. Howdy, howdy. Hey, Jesslyn. How you doing? All right. So you have the White House with green trim, and you just mopped with Lysol. Okay. Pine Sol. Pine Sol. Oh, Pine Sol. <laughs> okay. Pine Sol, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It, is is it your son who passed? Yes. Okay, because I got a, a male energy chomping at the bit to talk to you. Yes. And um, I, you, the kids tonight are making me crack up. And I know that, that uh, once again, losing a child is devastating. But you got to realize, we're the ones that are miserable and unhappy and sad. Spirits are pure energy. They're zipping around at the speed of light. They don't get old, sick, tired, or die. And your son thinks this is funny but he's got a big bag of those, you know, those old style wooden um, clothespins. Remember the wooden yes. clothespins? And he's yes. handing them to you and he goes, have at it, mom. So what is it with wooden clothespins or hanging like sheets up to dry or something like that? We used to have that in our backyard to hang their clothes when they were small. The okay. Wooden, the plastic one. Okay. Perfect. The wooden ones. Yeah. Because this is a shared memory. And when spirits bring up things like this, it may seem trivial, but what he's doing is he's building a rapport with me. And once we get confirmations on the minor things, and now he's pulling me right to the first two weeks of December, I'm actually hearing Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite. Da -da 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 All right. So there could be something about nuts or nutcrackers or a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to you, him, or someone close to you within the first two weeks in December? Um, Actually, uh, we were just talking about with my family to go to Florida the first two weeks of December, December 4 to 11. Boom. That's what I call bada bing, bada Florida. Okay, so... That means he is around you. He is aware of what's happening. He's now showing me an image of St. Christopher. This could mean somebody connected to you or him with the name Chris, Christopher, or Christine. We know you're traveling. St. Christopher is the patron saint of travel, so we already got that. Christian. But Christian is his brother. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So his brother's here in this world. Yes. Um, were they like really close, but always kind Very. of bicker bickering and arguing, but not really bickering and arguing? Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to say what he just said. He goes, Christian's still a snot, but I really love him. <laughs> uh, look, I just transmit what I get. I know that sounds kind of, you know, but but uh, I think that's just his way of saying to Christian, I love you. Okay. Um, I can see his impression when you say that. Go ahead. 
I can see his impression, my son's impression, Alan in spirit, when you're saying that, the way he said it to his brother. Yeah, he's saying that. He goes, but I love him. And um, he also wants to acknowledge um, to you about his brother Christian. He said, in in you know, since his passing, um, and you said your son's name was Alan. Be careful not to give me names, but I'm not oh, penalizing sorry. you for that. No, that's all right. We, hey, look, we got his brother's name. That's good. He said that uh, Christian's really stepped up to the plate. He's really stepped up to the plate. Okay, he said, yeah. and he's looking out for you. Okay, he's gotten very, very protective of you, and he worries about you all the yep. time. Okay, yes. um, you have a, a beautiful, wonderful son and spirit, and you've got a beautiful, wonderful son here in this world. Um, are you going to, is it the West Coast of Florida when you go? Um, we want to bring back the memories when we were, he was still with us in 2019. And I want to try as part of my grief to Florida, right, but, uh, the, the Legoland, uh, Disney. Yeah. But are you going to be going, um, possibly to the West coast around the Tampa Bay Clearwater area? And the reason I'm saying that is he's <laughs> showing me a map of Florida and I'm seeing the Tampa Bay Clearwater area. Miami, Florida to go to the beach. Well, Miami's on the east, southeast yeah. coast, but he's talking about the Tampa Bay clear water. Hold on, hold on. This could be something for somebody else because we could be arcing over to another spirit. Um, is there somebody with a connection to the Tampa Bay clear water area? Hold on. I took my son to Tampa. Um, I'm going to Tampa. Wait, wait. We had a couple Tampa hits. Um, um so, Jesslyn, I'm going to leave those messages with you. God Thank bless you. you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, the Bye -bye. Tampa Bay Clearwater. Okay. Well, um, I Bert popped out, but I don't know. There's so many people saying it now. Oh, that says. All right, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me work with the Clearwater spirit and see if we can uh, okay. narrow it down. This is a male. Um, he was bigger. Okay, so he's either a husky build or had a, uh, some, you know, extra pounds on him. With his passing, I'm getting, um, and please forgive me, everybody, I'm getting a slamming sensation to my body. Uh, this indicates an abrupt, um, sudden, or unexpected passing, and I feel rapid cardiopulmonary failure. This doesn't feel like um, uh, a traumatically induced passing. This feels like, um, and I'm getting that awful taste in my mouth. Um, which I associate with with uh, drugs. This could be legal or otherwise. Um, it feels very much like fentanyl, um, but that's that's the sense that I'm getting. Does that make does that resonate with anybody? About ten people. <laughs> yes, we have. Um, let's see. Um, In conjunction with the Clearwater Tampa Bay area. So I believe that. Um, Let's see. Everybody's skipping around here too. Um, Trent, Trent and Angie said they can take everything. Beth C said she can take everything. Okay. Um, well, then we'll start with one in our. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say Robin is saying it was her son, but I believe she also said she was. Uh, she had the clear water connection, but that's okay. Let's um, go with um, Trent and Angie. So. Um, okay. Let's bring them up. Yeah. Okay, I've asked them to unmute. Hi there. Hi. Gee, could you do that one more time? I wasn't quick enough. Hey, can you hear us? Hey, Mark. Right now, yes. <laughs> Hi, there. Hey, Trent. Hey, Angie. Hi. Okay. Um, okay, so um, this matches up with your son? Yes. Yes. Okay, um, hold on, hold on. Well, we're getting a lot of funny kids coming through tonight. This guy <laughs> had the sense of humor. Um, mm -hmm. Little socially inappropriate at times, but um, <laughs> good-hearted. He was definitely not a bully or a mean guy, but this mm -hmm. guy, he had a wicked sense of humor. And he's holding up a jelly donut. And all right, <laughs> now it's hard not to like jelly donuts, but there's got to be a significance to a jelly donut. Does that make sense in any way? um he liked sweets well remember this could relate to him or it could relate to you or someone else close to you in any way 
So I want you to ponder the Jolly Donut. And then also, mm -hmm. um, Trent, he's focusing on you. And did either he smoke or do you smoke? But he's talking about someone grappling with quitting smoking. He did smoke. He did smoke? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and you never smoked? Well, no, but I used other tobacco. And you, you know, um, I, <laughs> you know, I was going to say, and, and I should have said it because I can't take credit. He was going, ask dad about the wacky tobacco. So I think we know what he's talking about there. Yes, um, we do know. Okay. I used to practice law, so we are making no admissions to anyone or any law enforcement <laughs> agency in the United States or any associated jurisdictions. All right. So back, back to your son. Um, and now he's showing lots of helicopters. Did you guys ever fly in a helicopter or was somebody in military? Because I'm here and I've been in helicopters a lot. So I've seen, I'm seeing the helicopter blades. What's up with helicopters? I don't know the helicopters right off the bat. Um, other than what we were in Alaska a couple months ago and we were watching helicopters bring uh, like supplies in and out. How about, yes, we were in Alaska a few months ago and we saw <laughs> helicopters, okay? See how easy it is to fall into the no, no, no. But yeah, we were in Alaska and we saw helicopters. Let's go with that. What he's doing is he's letting you know that he's been around you and aware of what's happening in your life, okay? So he knows that you were there and you uh, were, you know, you, you saw helicopters. And um, interesting. Earlier, I was talking about sunflowers, but now he's holding up his hand. I'm seeing sunflower seeds, like the kernels. Who eats the sunflower seeds a lot? We used to do it a lot when he and I would go hunting, like for uh, bird hunting and stuff like that. He would always get a bag of sunflower seeds when we went. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, do you have his rifle still? He showed yes. me a rifle, and it's. he said... He said, you're keeping it like it's an artifact, like it's a yeah. shrine. He <laughs> says, Dad, you can use it. <laughs> and that's what he said. He said, it's like the Holy Grail. <laughs> and, and he's being <laughs> funny, but but he also is acknowledging that you're honoring him, you're respecting him, but he also doesn't want you to look at the gun and feel the pain. He said, use it, okay? You know, when you go hunting, he said, have some fun. And who's Paul? Paul. That's a good friend of his um, who just recently reconnected with our younger son. Perfect. He said, say hello to Paul. You say <laughs> hello to Paul. Okay. And um, he said, mom, God, you drive slow. Mom, God, you drive slow. <laughs> It's, it's nice when they're not criticizing someone's driving. He's just saying, you're a slow driver, mom. He goes, that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, George? George. Now, George could be, could be George. It could be Georgia, as in the state, or a girl's name. And sometimes George could be a name similar like Jordan. But I'm hearing George. And here's why I'm getting George. You know the uh, the curious George, the chimp? He's showing mm -hmm. me an image of the cartoon character, Curious George, unless that particular cartoon character makes sense or George, Georgia, Jordan, or, you know, the state of Georgia visits there, connections there, anything there makes sense. He had a friend named Jordan who is a family friend. Okay, great. So um, he said they don't necessarily believe in this, but they will when you say hello for me. OK, um, I love the way he puts things. He's holding up two feathers, not one, mm -hmm. but two feathers. And these feathers, um, they're gray. They look like owl feathers. Is there anything about owl feathers yes. that makes sense? Or in what yeah. way? So a couple of times I've had owl encounters, one where it was standing in the middle of the road in the broad daylight and I had to stop. And then we have an owl out back. Almost every night we hear. Perfect. And you know what he's doing now? He's doing this. Peekaboo. <laughs> peekaboo. So I know like we all play peekaboo with kids when they're really young. He goes, can I say what he just said? Sure. Yeah. He said, I'm not effing with you, <laughs> but I'm still playing peekaboo. <laughs> and 
what he means by that, um, the feathers and the owls that you see is what I have termed as a frequency beacon. And your attention are drawn either to the owl feathers or to the actual you know, bird and owl. And immediately, who do you think of? You think of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's because a spirit can direct um, a, a creature to, to a particular area that you will notice. They can also direct our attention to an object. And when you see that, that bird, that animal, that insect, whatever, or uh, the object like the feather and immediately think of him, that, then you got the message. So mm-hmm. he is showing you signs and he is around. He said, Mom, try not to burn the house down with all the candles. What's with you and the candles? Uh, candles, incense. So he's right. <laughs> yeah, Mom, let's be more careful with the flammable uh, things, okay? Um, he said, you know, because um, he's he's showing me that you burn, you know, candles for him. He burned the incense. He goes, but Mom, please oh, yeah. don't burn down the house. So this yeah. is another form of spirit intervention where he is coming through to say, yes, I know you're doing this and that's all cool and great and all, but please be careful with it. Okay. So um, what you should do, if you're going to burn a candle, um, have it like, you know, something like it's on top of something that is not flammable. Mm -hmm. Um, You could even put like a piece of aluminum foil underneath it or whatever, or put it on like a marble slab or something like that. Um, But he's very concerned that you're going to start a fire. He goes, in my honor. And he says, and not in a good way. Okay. So he wants you to know that. He is funny. (laughs) He is hilarious. Okay. And who's Nick? Mm -hmm. He's showing me Nick. Nick, because I'm zeroing in on December 6th, which is the Feast of St. Nicholas. Who's Nick or Nicholas or Nicky? So Nick was a good friend of his in Florida um where he passed and um just reached out to angie last week Mm -hmm. to show him something chase had written okay so see we got a twofer there number one nick's his good friend he's in florida where he passed and nick recently reached out to angie so this is an indicator that chase is is definitely around you so he's going all right gotta go see you next time (laughs) all right so okay Thank you guys Thank so you. much. Thank All right. You. Um, that was so cool. God <laughs> bless. All right. Now I'm getting. You're muted, um, Elizabeth. Now I'm getting an, another spirit coming through. Um, this is another young male, younger male. And ooh, this is traumatic. Uh, traumatic passing. Um, please forgive me. I'm feeling a massive impact to my head and face. I am tasting blood. That doesn't always mean a massive bleed out. Could be an internal hemorrhage, but on this one, I'm getting that. I'm also feeling impact to my head, to my face, to my knees, and I'm feeling my my wrist um, hitting what feel. This feels like a car accident um, based on the impacts. Like I feel like my my hand is 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 like this, and and uh, the wrist is hitting what feels like a dashboard along with my knees. Um, somebody said, no, not a car accident. Oh. Okay. Hold on. But impact. Yeah, so- let me, let me, let me work a little bit more. Hold on with the spirit. Um, he said, no, it's a car accident. He goes car accident. And he was in the front passenger. He was not the driver. He was on the passenger side. Does anybody have a son or, or another young man, uh, connected to you in some way that may have been in the front front passenger side in a collision sarah simon said so elizabeth did you see that her son nick yeah so should we bring sarah up is that okay yeah okay okay for some reason i'm not able to do it elizabeth i don't know why it's not working can you type it into the search put her name in i will definitely thank you (laughs) of the participants really quickly uh, is it S A R A? Okay, I got it. Hi, Sarah. Can you unmute, please? Hi there. Can you guys hear me? Sorry, I'm, I got to get out of the sun here. Yes. Can you say something one more time so I can catch you? Hi. Can you guys see me? And hear me? Yes. There we go. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Um, once again, my con- deepest sympathy on on your loss. 
um, based on what I what I described, how does this make sense to you? And don't give me his name, just um, based on what I said. Okay. Well, it started when you started talking about owls, but I won't go back there. Um, okay, he was but in... no, that's good. That's good because see, hold on. That's collective consciousness communication. Spirits of the commonality. The last folks, their son was connected with an owl, so that makes sense. So then we we made the right segue here. Okay, um, go ahead. Right. So owls have been a big thing for us as well. Um, he, you said a name. You don't want me to say his name, but you said a name that was his name. Right. Okay. After you well, that then I'll let you go. All right. What was okay? The name? His name's Nick. Okay, Nick. Perfect. So we got the owls. We got the Nick. Multiple meaning messages. Okay. Boy, you could very... be a whole. You could be half a chapter in my next book. Okay. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> he was in a very traumatic car accident. Okay. All right. That that's let's go. Ooh. Hold on. Let me go through this before I respond. He just put a big cake in front of me, and there's a bunch of maraschino cherries on it. Now, normally when I get cakes, I mean, and, and most people like cake, but what that indicates, that could be something about a birthday connected to you or him. But generally what that means is think of a six-week time frame, and today is smack in the middle. And so within three weeks, either side of today is a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to him or you or someone close to you. And you're nodding yes. In what way? His birthday is September 30th. Oh, wow. Yesterday. Okay. Um, no, so, it's September. Or two days 30th. ago. September. Oh, September 30th. Okay. I thought you said yes. third. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Okay. So his birthday's coming. So, so we got Nick here. Okay. Hold on. Now he's playing for me Elton John's Rocket Man, and I think it's going to be a long, long time. All right, cool song. I like Elton. All right, anything with Elton John or Rockets, Rocket Man, Space Program, but he's, I'm hearing Rocket Man. Um, I mean, he loved that song. He was a big musician. That music okay. was a big life. Uh, we sang that song a lot together, but um, we also sang a lot of other songs. Well, yeah. that, that'll work. That'll work. I mean, because, oh, and, and what, what did he say? My husband. Yeah, right, yeah. He, he, he come um, on in. Yeah, bring him in. Okay. <laughs> he, um, he doesn't have a shirt on, so he's, anywho, he, <laughs> uh, my son, Nick, was a big um, ski jumper and constant uh, 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 You're Dwight himself. D. I, you're Dwight oh, D. Sorry. Eisenhowering. All I need is why Rocket Man makes sense. Okay. And I'm he not would chastising launch himself him into the air. How's that? In different okay, ways. Okay, that'll work. So he was the Rocket Man. Okay, hold on. And hey Dad, are you a real fast driver? He 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 focuses on you, and I feel like like I'm just hitting it in like the hottest sports car ever. What is up with you, Dad? I I drive a truck, so it's not, but I do drive fast. Too way too oh, fast. Oh, you do drive fast. Okay. Okay. He says, I could see you in the BMW M5. Okay. So I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but I know they're expensive and hot cars. Um, <laughs> but, but it's interesting. He keeps showing me the BMW logo. And BMW is manufactured in Germany, specifically in Munich. Have you guys have any connection to Germany, Bavaria, which is that part of Germany, German heritage, or something with BMWs? In what way? Just my mother's side of the family. So his grandmother is German. Oh, okay. Is she in spirit? No, not yet. Okay. He said not yet. Is she she um in declining health? Yes, she is. Okay. And is she from Germany? No. Um, her parents are. She's a parents first generation. Are. Okay. You said your grandmother or your mother? My mother. Because he's with a woman who is speaking German. That's that why be. I'm asking this. Okay. Mom's mom would be your, your, your maternal grandmother said, Frohe Weihnachten, which means Merry Christmas. Okay. Now, most people like Christmas. I take it mom's mom was was a really good cook and a really good baker. Does that make any sense? Incredible. Oh, my God. I mean, I am tasting like the most amazing cakes. And she's talking about August 12, August 12. Now, 
when I know that that's a weird one. This could mean let let's break this down. This could mean a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event which could relate to either of you, your son, or or someone close to you within August. It could mean I, August twelfth, or it could be the twelfth of any other month. Go ahead. That's the date she died. August twelfth. No yeah. Well, then we definitely got your grandma, and she's wishing you a Merry Christmas. Um, well, she's talking to you because when your son went into the light, she was the one who greeted him. And she had her hands like, as I say, Ish bin Muti, Ish bin Oma. I am mother. I am grandmother. Oh, my God. I'm going to start crying here. Um, and the thing is, um, spirits don't speak human languages. They transmit electromagnetic impulses to me. But they also know that I speak a little bit of German, and that's why she is coming through and speaking some German to me. Okay. Um, who just, and, and she just said, Alles Gute zum, zum Geburtstag, which means happy birthday. And we know that your son's birthday is coming up on September 30th, but that's not what she's talking about. Who just had a birthday not too long ago? And is there a Kevin connected to you guys? can't think of one right now can't okay think of one. um hold that thought does this make sense to anyone else Do, is there a kevin and or somebody that just had a birthday a couple weeks ago hold on somebody said my son just said it went, it went too fast um yeah so i think i think um he's delivered the message to you guys and also and and um both of you that your grandmother there were several spirits. There's always several spirits who greet us when we come into the light, but she was the one at the forefront. Okay. And I see her arms outstretched. And so when he transitioned, she just enveloped him in the love of the light. And, and they, they both want you to, to know that. Okay. Thank you. So, so God bless you guys. Thank you so much, Mark. And thank you. And um, it looks to me like uh, we have a, a sibling her name is Linda L. Her brother is Kevin and is in spirit. And his, uh, her birthday is August 12th. Let's go. Let's do that. Let's do that. Well, okay. Linda. Her name is Linda. It's Linda L. Yes. Uh, I've asked her to unmute. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to. You know, and, and I'm going to say this. I'm so happy that helping parents heal um, <laughs> extends to siblings, you wow. know, because losing a sibling is 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 devastating and when i was at helping parents heal there was a lot of parents there with their children in this world and because there's not really a whole lot of support for for siblings who've lost siblings so i'm so glad that helping parents heal has extended to that let's let's bring linda up please um actually i'm here because my daughter passed but i just happen to have a brother he passed eight months before. All right, my, Linda, my... Linda, before we no, no, no things away, <laughs> perhaps your brother is going to bring through your daughter. <laughs> so, so let's start there. All right. So you have a brother, Kevin, who just had a birthday recently and he's in spirit. I had the birthday. Oh, you had the birthday and Kevin is in spirit. Okay. So let's work with Kevin and yep. ow, my head really hurts. Was he having some problem like with his head or something going on inside it? Or was it a quick passing with him? No, it wasn't quick. He was sick. Uh, he was sick, but I'm getting sharp pains in my head. Um, do you know if it, all right. Could it be, want... um, uh, there, there was trauma to a very close friend of his recently. Okay, we'll we'll work with that. Um, but but hold on, hold on. And I know you want to talk to your daughter. I want you to do this because without meaning to, a lot of times when people are so anxious, they the I want, I want creates a block. So we're gonna do this together. Everybody, we're gonna do this on the count of three. We're gonna inhale through our, our nose and then gently exhale through our mouth. All right. One, two, three, inhale. Now exhale to your mouth. Don't you feel the tension kind of go out? All right, so your daughter's coming through, and she's immediately filling my mind's eye with a beautiful color yellow, a real beautiful yellow, okay? Um, what does yellow mean to you, Linda? 
emotionally? Um, sunshine. Sunshine, radiance, happiness. Okay. And she's talking about um, renal fatigue, renal failure. Is there somebody connected to you or her that is having issues with kidneys? That was my brother. Okay, so that indicates she's with your brother. All right. So see, I knew I knew when when you said, Well, I have a brother and daughter, I was like, Yeah, yeah, because they're they're coming in together. All right. Um the interesting thing, um, your brother, you said he was very ill, but your daughter, um, and once again, when I start giving evidence about cause of passing, I know I sound very clinical, um, but but um I'm just getting this like that. I feel this just release. Um, it feels to me that something was going on, which was causing an atrophy of cardiovascular system and then like a letting go sensation. Does that make sense? Um, sort of. She was in ICU for three months. I think she was ready to go. Okay. Okay. Um The reason I'm hesitating is because I can't feel my fingers and my toes. So this indicates there was a circulation, something going on with blood. And I'm also feeling my lymph glands in my throat really, really swollen. Um, and I'm feeling pain up and down my spinal column. Um, and like, did she have cancer? My brother did. Your brother did. Okay. What? Um, okay. I'm going to ask, come on, Kevin, let's back off a bit. Let's get back. All right. What, what did your daughter pass from? Um, my daughter had um, bleeding in her brain and um, it kind of a downward spiral because of the medical care, unfortunately. Okay. Ble bleeding in the brain. Remember I said circulation issue. What yeah. is it that circulates? That's blood. She was getting me there. I'm getting the swelling here. Okay. Lymph glands. Okay. So, so we got her. Um, she said that and she knows that she goes, I know mom's really pissed at the doctors. Okay. She said, but there was nothing. There was nothing. Um, and she's describing the tissue of the blood vessels in her brain. She said, it was so advanced from the bleed, it was like tissue paper. And she's explaining that there was, okay, the bleed was, I feel at the top, at the, at the top of the head, but a little bit to the left quadrant, but then it started to expand. And she's explaining how the, the tissue of the vascular system basically just started degrading. And she said, there was nothing anyone could have done. She said, there's there's no medication that could have repaired things. Um, and she's talking now about Capricorn. Capricorn. The Capricorn time frame runs essentially from December 20th through January 20th, give or take a day or so on either end. And what that could mean, Linda, is a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event which could be connected to her or could be connected to you within Capricorn. Does that make sense to you in some way? Yes. In what way? She was, um, well, two, two, two possibilities. My mom is a Capricorn, but also uh, she was in the hospital during that period of time. Um, okay. Okay. She went in Thanksgiving weekend and was in for three months. And the worst of it, was during the Capricorn time. Capricorn. Okay. So, so see, that makes sense. And you, you, you did beautifully there and it's very difficult, but you're making the connections. Um, interesting. She's talking about, there is a genetic predisposition toward these very thin vascular walls. And she said that it's like a ticking time bomb and there's no way to know about it until it happens. Does that make any sense? Um, 
How did she get the, 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 was it an injury or did this just happen? It, it um, she was, she had bleeding in her brain at birth and had several palsy, but she lived a good life. And then when the bleeding in the brain happened uh, before she passed away, it was kind of sudden. We didn't expect it. Yeah. Okay. Now the cerebral palsy is, and I'm familiar with this because I had an uncle who had CP. Okay. So, so, um, and an aunt, his, his wife, um, um, that, that is not genetic. That is caused by complication to birth, but the actual brain bleed is, was genetic. Okay. That and, makes sense. Yeah. Because when she went into the, when I had her, I had to go in, I had, I needed to get a blood transfusion and I had the twice the surgeons had trouble um, getting my bleeding to stop. Well, um, 20 plus years later, when she was passing away, when she first went into ICU, they diagnosed her um, with Von Willebrand, I think, okay. uh, which is, um, so they had to give her something to um, prevent her from bleeding out. Yeah, so so she's explaining, uh, what, she's a great communicator. She's a great communicator. And she says, I'm straight as an arrow and fast as light. Straight as an arrow and fast as light. And what's really beautiful about, um, she had a difficult life from a physical perspective, but as a spirit, she's free of all that. And that's why she's saying, I'm straight as an arrow and fast as light. So, and she knows that you know that, but she wants to make sure you know that. And this is cool because you know those fans they have in Japan, like, you know, when she's showing one of those Japanese fans, she's doing this. Is there something about like fanning off, but particularly because I spent a lot of time in Japan and, you know, we think of like Japanese ladies with the fans, but the uh, samurai used to use them as weapons as well. And um, she keeps showing me these Japanese fans. Now, it may not make sense to her, but it may make sense to you in some other way. Or there could have been somebody in your family with a connection to Japan or maybe somebody who was stationed in Japan. But she is showing me these Japanese fans. I know that's a weird one, but I, I've been doing this long enough, and the weirder usually the more accurate. If I say if I say a, a fan, what comes to mind for you, Linda? It doesn't matter what it means. Just go for it. Um, I've got a few fans in the house that um, people have given me on, on their travels. but oh, Hold on, hold on. Could any one of them possibly have been from Japan? Um, I have some from China. China, okay. But I don't she's know talking. Hold on, she's talking about Japan. If I say Japan, what comes to mind for you? Um, one of my doctors, who my daughter has seen a number of times. Was, was from Japan? Um, yeah, she's half Japanese, and um, she's from the States, but her heritage is Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, you know, I'm of Italian descent and people think that automatically makes me speak Italian. You know, it's like <laughs> I can order dinner. Um, that doctor, did she really try hard? Um, she was. Um, yeah, she was an acupuncturist and or still is and a pediatrician and um my daughter wouldn't necessarily let her treat her, but she would tell me what to do. And then I would treat her. I would treat my daughter after she told me what to do. There we go. So she's acknowledging that she's acknowledging that. Now, let me, let me interpret this because all right, the fan partly in Japanese culture, the fan, okay. Saving face, losing face also, a, a lady in particular concealing her thoughts, her whereabouts. So the doctor who was of Japanese descent wasn't directly treating her, but treating her through you. Yeah. Does the fan vision now make more sense? So yeah. she's acknowledging that. And she said that doctor tried very hard because she had great empathy and compassion for what um, your daughter was going through and for what you were going through. And that's how she was helping. And that's yeah. what that message means. Yeah. So I'll True. leave that with you. Thank you, Linda. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Beautiful. Thank you. Wonderful, Wonderful. messages. 
What a great evening, Mark. Thank you. Yes, that was Thank you. absolutely wonderful. And I just want to remind everyone who's gotten messages, please, I've been putting it in the chat box, send these stories to me for the newsletter. It is so much fun to have them in the newsletter. It makes other parents be able to uh, read the article and see what happened on the um, uh, live as well. And, and you know, what is even more important is that a lot of times these messages have um, multiple meaning for, for many different people. So if you got a reading that you were sure was for you and you want to tell us about it and send a picture of your son or daughter as well, I've been getting a lot of those lately because these kids piggyback like crazy. But um, this this has just been so fabulous, Mark. Oh yes, my God. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Inyo, um, Elizabeth, Irene, and everybody here. Thank you so much for for the honor of of letting me me do this for you. Um, I'm going to invite everyone. Please visit my website, which is afterlifefrequency.com, just like my book, Afterlife frequency.com. And I invite you to sign up for my newsletter. I've got um, a number of spirit communication events coming up. We've um, I've got uh, two in October, which are what's known as light circles. And a light circle is an online event limited to six people. That way, everybody is guaranteed a reading. And if you go to my website, go to the calendar of events, go into October, you can, um, can uh, go ahead and sign up for those. You can also sign up for my newsletter and also every thursday i have a live stream show the psychic in the doc and my co-host is world-renowned behavioral psychologist dr pat basili and we take calls from listeners and um and so you can find out about all of that and and booking a private reading in addition to the other other things that that are available um so thank you I want to thank all of you so very much. You guys were just absolutely amazing to do readings for, and I look forward to next time. God bless you. Oh, we thank look you. forward to having you next time. Yes. And we look forward to having you at Thanks, the conference. Mark. And everyone is going to unmute and say unmute thank you. Unmute and say thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.